From beginning to the end, it will always be, it's always been you, Jesus. Jesus, nothing else matters. Nothing in this world will do. Oh. of my life from beginning to the end it will always be it's always been you Jesus Jesus nothing else matters nothing in this world will do It's all about you. It's all about you. From my heart to the heavens, Jesus be the center. It's all about you. Yes, it's all about you. From my heart to the heavens, Jesus be the center. Cause every knee will bow And every tongue shall confess you Jesus 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 Hi everybody, it's Pastor Eric, and it is good to be with you for this uh, midweek teaching. I have something to share with you that I think will be a true blessing to you. Uh, the Lord has been speaking to me uh, very loudly and clearly, I'm glad to say. And uh, the thing that he's been speaking to me in particular about over these last few days has been repentance. And uh, I believe he wants me to share what he's been sharing with me, with you. So it's good to be with you. I'm glad you're here. 
um, let's talk, I believe uh, God would have us have a conversation with each other and with him that'll be a blessing to us all. The freedom to repent. That's what I call our time together. Um, let's pray before we get started. Lord, we love you. You're good to us and your mercy toward us endures forever. Uh, that is a foundational truth and a foundational rock that we stand on, that you are good and that you love us and that love will not change. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And that means to us that you will never change, that you love us, you favor us, you are our God, our Lord, and our friend, and we can depend on that. It is on that basis that we come to you today. We come to your feet and uh, we ask you to pour your wisdom on, our, on us um, according to the, the Holy Spirit who dwells within us. Uh, may he speak clearly to us as we listen and as we pay attention to what thus saith the Lord right now. In Jesus' name, amen. The freedom to repent. And I want to start by uh, reading to you Acts 3, 12 through 21. Listen as I declare the word of the Lord. So when Peter saw it, he responded to the people, Men of Israel, why do you marvel at this? Or why look so intently at us as though by our own power or godliness we have made this man walk? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, glorified his servant Jesus, whom you delivered up and denied in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. But you denied the Holy One and the just and asked for a murderer to be granted to you and killed the Prince of Life, whom God raised from the dead, of which we are witnesses. And his name, through faith in his name, has made this man strong, whom you see and know. Yes, the faith which comes through him has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. Yet now, brethren, I know that you did it in ignorance, as did also your rulers. But those things which God foretold by the mouth of all his prophets that Christ would suffer, he has thus fulfilled. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send Jesus Christ, who was preached to you before, whom heaven must receive until the times of restoration of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. Yes, we enjoy the freedom to repent. That is the instruction that Peter gives us in this what we might call the first sermon ever preached in the church of Jesus Christ. Repent, turn from your sins. Christ is at hand. The word repentance, um, is, is, there are three words, three Greek words that are used uh, for repentance in the New Testament. I want to concentrate on, on one of them, metanoia. And it, it means a change of one's mind and purpose. With a cognate now metanoia, the now metanoia is used of true repentance, a change of mind and purpose and life to which remission of sin is promised. Evangelical repentance consists of a true sense of one's own guilt and sinfulness, an apprehension of God's mercy in Christ, an actual hatred of sin, and turning away from it to God, and a persistent endeavor after a holy life in a walking with God in a way of his commandments. The true repentant man and woman is conscious of guilt, of pollution, and of helplessness. Thus, he or she apprehends himself or herself to be just what God has always seen him to be and clears him to be, sinners in need of a savior. But repentance comprehends not only such a sense of sin, but also an appreciation of mercy, without which there can be no true repentance. So repentance is a word that only truly makes sense to us as children of the living God, because in order to repent, we must know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. The first instruction to those who stood outside, looking upon those who had already entered into everlasting life, the first instruction, the first preaching to the unsaved was to repent. As a matter of fact, you can go through the New Testament and you can take the word salvation and replace it 
with the word repent and repentance and there be the same identical meaning because salvation is repentance and repentance is salvation. They are the same. Every one of us is guilty of the sin that Jesus died for on the cross. Every one of us. Therefore, no one can approach the throne of God without the repentance that Peter refers to in this passage. No one can come to God and have relationship with him or even so much as a substantive conversation with him without repentance because repentance recognizes the truth about who God is and who we are. And without that truth, without that honesty, we're not truly having a conversation with God because any conversation with God requires that I be honest with him because he's always honest with me. Repentance is the turning of my life to the way, the truth, and the life that is presented to me in Jesus Christ alone. Once again, there is no repentance. Repentance has no meaning apart from Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. So notice the repentance Peter spoke of is rooted and grounded in the realization that Christ is Lord and Savior and, and that he's the only way to right relationship. And it is not a place that we can come to on our own. It's a divine gift offered by God alone to one who has come to him in sincerity and in Christ. Repentance is a spiritual transaction that is found far beyond sorrow, far beyond the realization or the admission of guilt, far beyond efforts toward restitution uh, or amends or tearful, or tearful expression of regret. The reason is, is we can do all those things. We can be sorry for our sin. We can cry about our sins, sincerely, sincerely cry and sincerely regret and sincerely put our hands to doing things right and setting things straight. We can do all of those things without Jesus. And many people do. I commend every man who realizes that he's wrong in his ways and turns from that wrong way. But we can do that in itself without Christ. What we're talking about here with repentance is a spiritual transaction, that which we do in the light of who Christ is and what Christ offers us. So realizing we've sinned and failed and done wrong does not measure up to biblical repentance. Repentance is a gift of God delivered to the children of God once we have received the conviction and the correction he offers. And that's, that's where some of us stumble in, in this walk of repentance. God loves you. So his conviction or uh, the realization that he brings to us that we have sinned, you know, shouldn't send us scurrying off. It should draw us close to him and bring us to the next step, which is confession. Confession, uh, a Greek word for confession that is used in the New Testament is homo legeo. Homo same, logeo word, which means that we say the same thing about ourselves that God has said. So the conviction, which is a move of the Holy Spirit in our life to bring us to a point of realizing uh, where we have gone wrong, leads to repentance where we agree with God, homo logeo, and that brings us to a point where God forgives us and sets us on the path toward righteousness and rightness in our walk. That is a, a picture of biblical, evangelical forgiveness and understanding. And when I use the word evangelical, I'm not using it in the way that is used so often today uh, to, note, to denote a group of people. I'm using it to denote what it is to uh, uh, see the scriptures and to adhere to a good, solid Christian biblical doctrine. That's how I'm using the word here. And, and to, to the, the way that we walk in the evangelical understanding of repentance is seeing the 360 of it. That is so much more than just being sorry or doing, uh, doing good works to make up for what we did wrong. All of those things, once again, can be done without Christ. But there's that which we can, can only be done in Christ. And that is realizing who we are and who he is and coming to him on his terms so he can make us who he has called us to be. Repentance, salvation. It is the first thing that God preaches and that the, that the preacher preaches to his congregation if he truly wants to win souls to God with understanding and in spirit and in truth. 
So I say to you that being a Christian is the freedom to repent because our repentance is not only the entryway into the life of salvation, it is the pathway through the life of salvation. It's not a one-off thing. There, it is not simply a band-aid for a sin. Uh, it is much more the understanding of that is that it is a way of life that where we are constantly realizing and coming to God on the basis of how short we fall and what a great work Christ has done. And that even though we fall short, that we are complete in Him and pleasing to the Father because of what He has done. That's what separates repentance from just a human sorrow and emotional transaction. This is a spiritual thing. And I think that, uh, that that is a real point of comfort for me, that in order to enter in fully into the things God has for me, I must do so in spirit and in truth. And this repentance that I'm talking about is a matter of spirit and truth. Now, we can't do enough to make up for the wrong we've done. We cannot earn a place at the table in God's kingdom. Nothing of true spiritual value can be bought or sold or bargained for because we can't bring anything to God that adds one bit of stature to him because he is complete in himself. You and I have no righteousness of our own that might enrich heaven one bit. And the church doesn't become any more pleasing to God because I entered into the scene, or you entered into the scene. The church is pleasing to God because we are those whom Christ has presented to him as his brothers and sisters. And we are children of God because of what Christ has done. And the Father then makes us joint heirs with Jesus Christ to whereas we enjoy all things that he enjoys with the Father, but we do so in him. And that is the understanding that brings us to the repentance that God recognizes and that pleases him. You see, the only gracious thing that we can do is be willing to repent, to turn from ourselves and from the world to God, to fall on our knees, to look up to heaven, to, to ask God, to beg God for the forgiveness of our sins which without his forgiveness would negate any opportunity we would ever have of spending eternity with the Father. But with that forgiveness, we have the opportunity. Right now, as a matter of fact, we're seated with him in heavenly places. And as good as it is today, the best is yet to come. And we have the right, the freedom, the repentance to receive and enjoy times of refreshing from God, as Peter spoke of in the passage I read earlier. The times of refreshing that he offers us, and he offers us those times in Jesus Christ alone. Now, I suspect that many of us who right now could use some times of refreshing. So what is the pathway to those places? The pathway is repentance, a constant and consistent turning to God that pleases him in such a way that, that, that he knows that, that we understand and we appreciate who we are in Christ and who Christ is in us. And we understand that there's nothing that we can do apart from him that is pleasing because the only thing on this earth that pleases God is his son. And my beloved ones, you are in his son. We need to rejoice in that. This freedom that we have is a freedom from the overarching power of sin the sin that once ran our lives, the sin that once was, would, would cause us to hide and to, and, and, and to obfuscate and to, and to lie and to hedge our bets. Repentance has brought us to a place where we can walk openly and freely before God and man. Not that at any point we are going to be sinless in ourselves. As a matter of fact, you and I are not sinless even after we're saved, but we are sin free. We're free once again from the overarching, overwhelming power that sin once had in our life. And that's because we repent. We've heard the voice of the Lord, just as the men that day heard Peter's voice, repent that days of refreshing might ensue. So I say this to you, repent, because God really does have some days of refreshing and he wants to pour his spirit out upon you afresh you, you and I first have to turn away from all others 
and turn away from everything else and turn to him. And you'll see his arms outstretched, open wide to you, welcoming you and me into understanding and wisdom that is simply the outworking of our willingness and our exercise of the freedom to repent. So I say this to you right now, brothers and sisters, repent, turn to the Lord. I'm not saying there's any particular sin that we need to repent of. Once again, repentance is much more than just turning away from sin. It is turning away from sin and realizing the lifestyle that is ours when we turn away from sin as a lifestyle, when we walk righteously as a lifestyle. That is the lifestyle of repentance. That's where you and I are, that's where God has brought us, and that's where you and I will experience the freedom that is ours in Jesus Christ. So I have a few more things to share with you about what repentance looks like, and I want you to receive these things as instruction because I believe the Lord would have you and I pay attention to this and go forward in this knowledge and, once again, in this instruction. Let's turn from the need of man's approval. Father, forgive us for being man-pleasers. Part of repentance, uh, a, a, a significant part of repentance, is turning away from the standards of the world and turning completely to the standard who is Jesus Christ. Not a set of rules, not a set of do's and don'ts. Following do's and don'ts is not repentance because as long as I'm living by the law, then I am fallen from grace. As a matter of fact, that's what fallen from grace means. So often people use that term, fallen from grace, but we use it poorly because fallen from grace does not mean that someone was in a high place or an exalted place and their behavior or their sin or their shortcomings uh, caused them to fall from that exalted place. That is not falling from grace. Falling from grace is turning back away from the grace that God has given us and, and from walking according to grace and walking according to the law. Paul uses the term fallen from grace in the book of Galatians. And that's where he is correcting the Galatian church because they have turned away from the grace of God and turned back to the laws of Moses. So falling from grace means that you and I no longer walk according to the grace that is ours in Christ, but we decided that we can do right by just not doing this and not and doing that and doing the other, crossing our T's and dotting our I's. That is not the life God has called you to. He's called you to a life of grace. He's called you to a life of repentance. And trust me, if you walk according to his grace, if you repent, you will please God. You will cross the T's. You will dot the I's. But you'll do it in Christ, who is already pleasing to the Father. If you're in Christ, you'll be pleasing to the Father. Let your effort be not to do everything right, but to get your life to Jesus Christ, to get on your knees at his feet. That is the most high place. So let's turn away from being the need of being pleasing to men and accepted by the world. Repentance is turning from the way we're going and turning to the way the Lord is leading us. Secondly, let's turn from our busyness to the business of the kingdom. When you and I pay attention to what God is telling us and what God is having us to do, trust me, we will touch every base that needs to be touched. Now we can do all the things that the world requires, all the things that we require of ourselves and miss the most important things. So uh, Jesus puts it this way, seek first the kingdom and its righteousness and all these other things will be added to you. Sometimes we take the add-on, the things that God would give us if we would just pray, if we would just repent. And we take those things and set them forward. But if we repent and put that forward, if we walk with the Lord by His grace, put that forward, then all those other things will just be added to us. So, beloveds, turn away from your busyness and turn away to the business of heaven. Thirdly, Let's turn away, let's repent. Turn away from fretting and complaining and murmuring and blaming God and others and take responsibility ourselves. Let's turn away from fretting. Let's turn away, as I said, from complaining and murmuring and gossip and, and, and speaking in a way that is not uplifting and edifying to your brothers 
and your sisters. See, one of the signs that you and I understand repentance and the forgiveness which has been given to us is that we forgive others. What a sad thing it is for Christians to go about and bandy the name of any other Christian about in any unsavory way, in any way that brings reproach upon the name of another saint. Because what that, what that tells me and what that tells the Lord is that you don't understand the forgiveness that you have received. That I don't understand the forgiveness that I received if I then turn around and, and, and use my energies and use my mouth to bring a, a disparagement on any other person, most importantly, any other saint. The sign that you and I are walking in repentance and walking in the understanding of that repentance is that we also forgive others because we have been forgiven. And as you know, if we don't forgive others, the Lord will not forgive us. And the fact that we engage in anything negative toward another saint proves that we don't understand the grace that's been offered to us. Then, beloveds, let us turn to the Word of God as the priority of our lives. Uh, repentance is turning to God according to His Word. Uh, the psalmist says this, I have hidden the Word of God in my heart that I might not sin against you. That's in Psalm 119. I've hidden your Word in my heart that I might not sin against you. The power that you and I have to walk in repentance is according to the word of God, which is in us. And, and what I always like to share with my brothers is the word of God is pure power. And when we understand God according to the revelation we have in the word of God, we understand God as we ought to. And that understanding gives us the power to walk in wisdom, uh, to walk in fruitfulness. And without an understanding of the Word of God, it is doubtful whether any of us can walk in repentance because the Word of God teaches us what that repentance looks like, not just once, but moment by moment, day by day, conversation by conversation, work by work. The Word of God is everything when it comes to the walk of repentance. My beloveds, I believe you should memorize some of the Word of God. Uh, you should be able at any point at any moment be able to recite a significant chunk of God's word because it's a sign that you've hidden that word in your heart and any time any time you plant good seed in good soil it is going to bear good fruit so repentance requires a, a successful walk in the repentance offered to us in Jesus Christ requires that you and I walk according to his word so let's turn away from the world and turn to the Word of God as a priority in, your, in our lives. Let it be the first thing that we think about. Let it be the last thing we think about because the scriptures tell us that Jesus Christ is the Word of God. That's what repentance looks like. Let us turn away from unhealthy, undisciplined, and unholy activities and relationships. You know, turning to God is going to mean turning away from others. It is going to mean turning away from anything that brings any reproach whatsoever upon the testimony of Jesus Christ in your life. It is going to require a new level of discipline. It is going to require a new level of focus. It is going to require, once again, that we leave behind things that need to be left behind so that we can go forward to, the, to where God is taking us. One of my favorite verses in the scriptures is 1 Corinthians 13, 11. When I was a child, I thought as a child, I reasoned as a child, I understood as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Now these childish things aren't always overt sins. They're just things that we need to move on from as we grow in our walk of repentance. There's some attitudes, there's some outlooks, there's some outcomes. Those are things of childishness and childhood. But we are called to grow up and to mature and to come into the fullness of Christ Jesus. And we do that according to the walk of repentance that God has given us. Repentance, once again, is not only turning away 
from wicked and wrong things. It's turning away from other things, anything other than a fierce focus on Jesus Christ. Set those things aside and walk forward into the things God has for you. Sometimes it's painful because it's difficult uh, uh, to, to see what's ahead of us when we know what we have and we know where we've been, but God is calling us beyond what we've had and beyond where we've been into something that we cannot yet know. It takes faith to walk that way and it takes repentance to turn away from the way we were walking to the way that Lord the Lord would have us walk. So make sure that you are, as a lifestyle, turning away from that which is unhealthy and undisciplined, turning away from unholy activities, turning away from that which is too small for you now, and walk into the fullness and the brightness of what God has set before you, that is repentance. Let us turn away and repent from the need to have things our way. You know, one of the most helpful things I say to myself, and I usually say it to myself every day, is, Eric, it's not about you. You know, when it's not about me, then I can set aside some things that would otherwise stumble me. If it was important to me what everybody thought, if it was important to me that everyone spoke highly of me, if it was important to me that everybody liked me, if it was important to me that everybody agreed with me, or that everybody stays with me or follows me or, or, or goes to my church for the rest of their lives, if that, those kind of things were important to me, then it would be about me. But if it's about Christ, then I am free to let everyone and everything go into the, the hands of God, the sovereign, sweet will of God for my life and the life of everyone around me, and to just let it be. Beloved, there's some things in life that aren't as pleasant as we would like them to be. Uh, there's, some, there's some places where we like to get that, it, that is maybe more difficult to get than, that, than we thought, and there's some things to accomplish that are difficult to accomplish. Life sometimes is very, very difficult. And sometimes there are more problems and issues coming from more directions than we could possibly handle, which is why we drop to our knees and we turn from our own self-sufficiency to the sufficiency of Christ. And when we uh, just practice the art of, of, of letting things go and letting things not be about us, then we can brush off things that would have stumbled us at one point. But now, since the, what we care about is the testimony of Jesus Christ, and it's not about me, and I walk in that way, then I am free from all of the chains of, of, of what men and women say and do and what others think, and I am set free to focus on what God says and does and what he thinks. And that's what repentance is. You've turned away from the necessity of pleasing other people. You turned away from the necessity of being liked or even being loved by others because you know that you are loved by Christ. And if you are loved by Christ, you will walk away from some things that, that, that in ways that you once walked in some people in some relationships. And you will walk in the freshness and newness of Christ. Beloveds, keep walking with Christ. Turn away from the sameness and the old and turn into the new. And don't turn back. Everything that God has for you, every blessing, everything of joy, everything of fullness is in front of you. It's not to the left, it's not to the right, it's not behind you, it's in front of you. Repent, turn, and walk with the Lord. Finally, let us turn our lives and our cares back to Jesus. And I think that is so important in this day uh, when things are... Uh, a little different than I'm sure any of us thought they would be. We're in some new territory. We're dealing with, with some things I believe that uh, the Lord has sovereignly put on our plate, so to speak. And he wants us to deal with those things with grace and wisdom and understanding. Uh, we have been given, by the way, as a church, the ministry of reconciliation. In other words, uh, this walk of repentance will lead us in such a way that it leads other people who walk with us and who witness our walk. It leads them in, to, to look at the same God that we look at. I always ask myself, if people follow me, where will they end up? You should ask yourself that question as a child of God. If people follow you, where will they end up? 
hopefully they'll end up at the feet of Jesus Christ. Because once again, that is the most high place. Hopefully they'll end up in the house of the Lord. Because that's where the children of God come together to give him the glory he deserves. Hopefully they'll find themselves in the closet of prayer. Because God welcomes us to that place because he hears prayer. He answers our prayers. And we draw close to him through those prayers. And when we turn away and from the world and turn our lives and carries back to Jesus, that's where we will be found. And anybody who walks with us will find themselves in that same place. Your repentance is a beautiful, beautiful thing. It is a great signpost to the world of what it is to walk with the Most High God. A God that they don't understand, a God that they don't yet know. But what they do understand and know about God, they understand and know it because of you. You are, Jesus said, the light of the world. Now we know that Jesus is the light of the world. So obviously what he means is that light that is in you is Christ. That is how he's chosen to preach the gospel to the world, by your testimony. So turn your life to Christ. Let's turn our lives and cares back to him, away from ourselves, away from others, away from good things, that we might walk in the God things. There are good things out there, beloveds, but what matters is that we are doing the God thing because we are walking with God in repentance. When the Lord spoke to me uh, last week and, and, and the first thing he said to me um, as I was fasting and praying and asking for him for direction or for a rainbow word for my life, the first word he spoke to me was repent. And the scripture that came to mind was Second Chronicles 714, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways and seek my face, then I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. Uh, he showed me that the, the, the first part of that passage is repentance in action, humbling myself, seeking his face, turning from my wicked ways, calling on his name. That is repentance in real time. And he's promised to respond to repentance in real time. So as you and I turn our faces back to him, and come to him according to his instruction, according to his word, according to his spirit. Days of refreshing will be mine and yours. That's what Peter said in the passage we read earlier. That's what the Lord promises us. And that's my prayer for you. Days of refreshing. And that you and I will walk in the freedom of repentance. I hope that's helpful, beloveds. It sure has been helpful to me to realize and to embrace the power and freedom there is for me to turn away from everything else and turn to the living God. Let's pray. Father God, thank you. Uh, you're good, your mercy endures forever, and uh, the joy of the Lord today is my strength. And I have joy because of this word that you have put on my heart and I've had the opportunity to share with my brothers and sisters. Uh, may we fare sumptuously on the word of God, and as we do, fill us, dear God. Fill us according to your spirit, according to your grace and purpose for our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, beloveds, once again, it is so good to be with you. And I'm looking forward to the day. Uh, once again, I can, can see you face to face and we can um, hug and do all the things that, that we've done for so many years. But I'm also very, very grateful for those of you um, uh, who have been very careful um, in this day of COVID-19 um, to walk wisely, um, to walk carefully, um, and, and to, to, to walk in health and consideration toward others. Um, continue to pay attention because it's very, very important that as a church that we act the most wisely. And if the Lord would point toward anyone who's walking wisely in this day, he would point to you and he would point to me. And uh, we will keep you posted and, and, uh, and, and, and keep paying attention to the signs and the information that comes our way so that we will know when is the proper time to do something uh, more and something different. But until then, 
I'll continue to come to you with these teachings. I sure hope they're a blessing to you. And uh, I'm really blessed to be able to share with you in this format. And uh, when things change, we'll do that and hopefully do that well also. Uh, thank you for your giving. Thank you for continuing to support the ministry with your tithes and your offerings and your gifts. Uh, it is a blessing to the house. It's a blessing to God. And thank you so much for keeping us with the, uh, up with us on our Facebook page, with us on our uh, website, we're going to continue to get information out there and ministry out there that will bless you mightily. Um, I look forward to seeing you soon. This coming Sunday, we'll be live streaming um, our service, 10 a.m. Pacific Coast time. Um, the Father's House, go to our Facebook page, and it'll be wonderful, wonderful um, to have you worship along with us. God bless you, and I look forward to to speaking to you again very soon.